Hey there, welcome to Rappler Talk. I'm Boris Joaquin, and for today we have a big treat because we get to talk to the global number one guru when it comes to coaching. And I just attended his limited engagement here in Manila. So there was a good opportunity for a lot of people to be learning from this number one leadership thinker, according to the Harvard Business Review, and America's number one executive coach. So please welcome in the show, Mr. Marshall Goldsmith. So welcome to the show. Thank Marshall, you. thank you for having, thank you for just allowing us to have you here. Boris, thank you for inviting me. Okay, well, I just want to ask you about how long have you been doing this? I mean, coaching. Oh, probably about 38 years. 38 years? I've been doing this before there was anything called coaching. Oh, what was called then? <laughs> I don't know, I just made it up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you practically wrote the Bible on coaching. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a quote, pioneer, which means I'm old. Okay. <laughs> You're not that old. I mean, you, 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 look, you look perfectly well. You look fit and healthy. Thank you. I'm in great shape. Uh, so, but uh, you were a consultant then uh, when you started out. So mm -hmm. you, were you, uh, did you start out as a book author? Did you start as Let a... Let me tell you the okay. story of my, my, how I get into this. I was a college professor, and I met a very famous man named Dr. Paul Hersey, mm -hmm. and he got double booked mm -hmm. two places at once. So he calls me up and says, can you do what I do? I said, I don't know. I'd been kind of following him around. He said, I need help. Can you do it? I said, I don't know. He said, look, I'll pay you a $1,000 for one day. Mm -hmm. I was making $15,000 for one year. Hey, that was 41 years ago and I was 28. You know what I said? Sign me up, coach. Okay. I did a program for the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. They're incredibly angry when I show up because I wasn't him. But I got ranked first place of all the speakers. They called Dr. Hersey back and said, send him again. Okay. That's how I got into leadership development. Coaching, also an accident. And Dr. Hershey is the is the guy behind. Uh, is he the one who worked with Ken Blanchard? Yeah, situational oh, yeah, leadership. Situational leadership. Okay, so you guys go a long way. Yeah. Well, Ken Blanchard's still a friend of mine. Oh, wonderful. Yes. No, so when how did you? What's how is your romance with coaching? I mean, is is did it automatically become your bread and butter? You, were you doing it quite regularly after that? You know, I got into it by accident. I was a pioneer in 360 degree feedback. Okay. So I, I worked on this customized 360 degree feedback and the CEO, he said, I got this kid working for us, young, smart, dedicated, hardworking jerk. He said, it would be <laughs> worth a fortune to me if I could help this kid change. Again, I heard fortune again. I said, I like fortunes, maybe I can help him. <laughs> he said, I doubt it. Then I came up with an idea. So I'll work with him for a year. If he gets better, pay me. If he doesn't get better, it's all free. You know what the CEO said? Mm. Sold. All of my coaching, it's always been done with the money back guarantee. Mm. I get paid nothing during the entire assignment. They get better, I get paid. They don't get better, all free. So you deliver results, in other words. That's they it. see the improvement in the person's leadership, in the person's performance, in delivering results, and that's the only time you get paid. That's it. Wow, okay. So, all the, and that's how you sustain your client in the process. Yes. Retention is probably key. So, how, uh, all the top 1,000 companies in the U.S. have probably engaged you one way or another. Oh, right? not that many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, you, you probably coach a lot of I've coached a lot of famous people, yes. Okay. Yeah. I've been the coach of the CEO of Ford and Pfizer and Glaxo and okay. president of the World Bank, the Mayo Clinic, mm -hmm. New York Public Library, you know, on and on and on. Yeah. Very distinguished people. Any politicians? No, uh, no politicians. No politicians. Celebrities? No. Okay. So mainly business leaders? Business, nonprofit, or for example, the World Bank, an organization okay. like that. Mm -hmm. what, what would you say your biggest challenge in coaching and, or mentoring, lead, guiding uh, this business leaders? It's very hard for leaders not to prove how smart they are all the time. Mm -hmm. As we journey through life, we're taking test after test after test to prove how smart we are. And that's okay when you're at the bottom. When you get promoted over and over again, you have to quit doing that. Mm -hmm. You have to let other people be smart. You have to let them be the hero. And the theory behind this is very easy. The practice is quite difficult. It's very deep, this instinct to prove I'm okay, to prove I'm smart. And it's hard to let go of that. Wow. And how do you get through that? I mean, so if you have that ego barrier that, you know, I, I always mm. need to prove myself. And coaching, in essence, uh, like what you teach most of your readers and mm -hmm. listeners and followers, is there's, there's a big amount of humility and acceptance that other people can be smarter than you. Well, what I do is I give people confidential 360-degree feedback. Mm -hmm. So they get feedback from everyone around them, and I write these reports, which, by the way, are very hard to hear because they're not used to this kind of feedback. And then I say, look, you're seen as doing a great job here, and you need to get better there. And 
I, if I'm working with the CEO, the board gets involved. If I'm working with the future CEO, the CEO and the board gets involved. And then they say, they pick what they want to improve. And then I say, look, this person gets significantly better at these things as judged by these key stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Is it worth this money? They say, yes. I say, you can't lose. They get better pay me. They don't get better. It's all free. I love what I'm hearing. Basically, you're saying that coaching is results-driven. It delivers results. Because for, for a young market like the Philippines, when it comes mm -hmm. to embracing coaching as a, as a formal intervention, they think that coaching is a waste of time because it doesn't really bring tangible results. What do you say about that? My, I get no results, I get no pay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what's the problem if people think that, is it the, the coaches that we have locally or is it the client's mentality when it comes to accepting and, and receiving coaching? Could be a little of both. I'd okay. say the responsibility should be more with the coaches though because the clients just need to, very simple equation. Mm -hmm. Imagine you're a CEO and somebody's a future CEO. Then I ask a question, does this person need to improve? Well, they almost always say yes. At what? They say something. They say, okay, if they get significantly better at this stuff, is it worth this money, yes or no? If it's not worth the money, don't hire me. Mm. If it's worth the money, you can't lose. They get better, pay me. They don't get better, free. Hard to argue with. Okay. Other than result, what are the other components or key elements that you consider to be integral in a coaching session? Well, in my coaching, every leader gets confidential feedback from everyone around them. Okay. Then um, I sit down with them. We review this comprehensive report. Do well, don't do well. And the key to my success, though, is not what I teach them. Mm. It's what they learn from everyone around them. I teach people to talk to every one of their key stakeholders, here's what I learned, here's what I'm doing well, here's what I need to get better at, give me ideas. Mm -mm. And then they collect input from everyone around them on a regular basis, then they talk to me on a regular basis, mm -hmm. then we do this follow-up, follow-up, follow-up and measurement. Now one thing I showed you is uh, we've got this research from tens of thousands of people around the world, if people do this, they get better. Okay. I love what I'm hearing again. You, you talk about humility, being able to just accept the fact that you don't have to be better to coach someone. Right. And the other one right now is they need to be learners. That's it. They need to receive feedbacks, like yes. champions. So uh, you talked about feedback, about like it's uh, feed uh, forward. Feed it's, forward. Uh, so what let do you me, mean let me explain yeah. how feed forward okay. works. Feedback is useful to figure out where you are. Mm. After that, we don't do feedback anymore. It's mm. all something called feed forward. In Feed Forward, you don't ask for feedback. In fact, you say, you know, Mr. Coworker or Mr. Stakeholder, I'm not going to ask you for feedback about the past. I'm going to ask you for ideas for the future. You can't change the past anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's much more positive. Well, my class that you've been able to participate in, you saw what happened. Everyone learns to ask for input, listen, and then they enjoy it. It's wow. fun to give people ideas for the future. It's painful to get feedback about the past. Mm. So forward looking, future forward looking. Forget the past. Well, let it go. You've already picked what you want to work on. Mm. Feedback is useful to help you know where you are. Once you get feedback in the first place, you don't have to do it over and over again. You say, okay, I've been there. Let's move on. So coaching in a way provides that forward looking, hopeful uh, perspective. Maybe because for some reason, if a CEO or a senior leader is has received a memorandum saying that you're going to be coached by Marshall Goldsmith, no matter how popular or starstruck I am by you, but just the concept, I'm going to be coached. There's something wrong with me. There's something wrong with my performance. Do, do you get that all the time from people you're coaching? Not really. you got to realize who I coach. Okay. Um, if you look at my book, Triggers, 27 major CEOs endorsed the book. Mm. CEO of the Year in the United States, winner of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, President of the World Bank, CEO of Pfizer, on and on and on. I don't really feel like any of these people would be insulted that I'm their coach. Okay. It's actually, is it an insult or a compliment? Well, it's, I'm sure it's a compliment if it's you. I think my question is more general. Just the concept of being coach. Well, that's uh, changing. Okay. It's, well, changing it's very right positive. Mm -hmm. See, I think you're exactly right. In the old days, what you said is 100% true. Mm. Today it's changing. Really? All these very, mm. Once all these big people have said, I have a coach and it's great, that makes it more acceptable. By the way, how many of the top 10 tennis players have coaches? All of them. Are they ashamed? Of course not. Why aren't they ashamed? Because they're winning. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same idea. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Because, yeah, I, I'm just trying to, I, hopefully our listeners gets to get to learn this. Uh, yeah. Because 
you're not you're not necessarily a loser when oh, some when they hire someone to my coach whole you. mission yeah. is helping successful leaders get even better mm. do a google search in quotes helping successful leaders the first 500 hits you see 450 are me and mm. the rest of the world is 50. Wow. I win that brand. <laughs> I'm actually impressed about that as well. You, you do a lot. I mean, you're very involved in social media and yes. you're very involved in the internet. Have you done some coaching digitally as well? Well, I give everything away. Okay. All, all my materials online. You can mm -hmm. copy, share, download, duplicate all my stuff. YouTube, uh, about three million times somebody's viewed one of my videos. LinkedIn, I have 1.1 million followers. I always giving stuff away online okay. it's all free so they just have to go to your website right go to my website or go to LinkedIn okay so marshallgoldsmith.com www.marshallgoldsmith.com okay. okay, and everything there's for free well amazing 275 videos okay mm -hmm. but out like one-on-one -on -one coaching does it have do you, do you get to do it digitally as well or do you prefer personal well, one-on-one -on -one coaching I usually do in person or by phone Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. so that also happens. Yes. In all these years that you've been coaching, Marshall, w w uh, what's the most significant experience that you've had? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot to choose from, but are, are there like a category like this is significant for me because... I'm going to give you two. Okay. One is the biggest positive change statistically. Mm. Uh, in the old days, this one company had actually numerical scales when they gave people feedback. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Wall Street? Story? Yeah. 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 This guy was the real-life role model for Gordon Gecko. Mm. He actually looked a little like you. No, <laughs> he's, no a real, okay. he's a real-life role model for Gordon Gecko. Michael Douglas, the actor, followed this guy around to learn how to act like a jerk. Now, he wasn't immoral like the man in the movie. He was highly moral. He was a total jerk. His score with treating people with respect, 0 0.1, from both direct reports and coworkers. Mm -hmm. So the CEO said, talk to the guy. So I said, look, I got a degree in math. 0 0.1 is not very high. I said, how do you treat people at home? He said, I'm totally different at home. I said, that's interesting. You're single or married? He said, married. So you have kids? Two kids. I said, let's call your wife and find out how surprised she is. We called his wife. You're a jerk. Let's check in with the kids. Jerk, jerk. <laughs> now I said, a pattern is beginning to emerge. I said, no, I can't help you make money. You already make more than God now. But I said, do you want to have a funeral that nobody shows up for other than business reasons? Mm. That's where we're headed here. You know what he said? I'm going to change not because of you or money, because I have a 13-year-old son. Mm. And 30 years from today, if a man like you read that report about my son, I'd be ashamed he was my son. Mm -hmm. Then he said, my son already acts that way. Mm. wonder where he got it. One year, wow. he got ranked 53.7 on treating people with respect from 0 0.1. Every year, he writes me a Christmas card. One year, the card said, thank you for the help you gave me years ago. I still have better relationships with people, especially my wife and kids. This guy's worth about two billion dollars. That's powerful. What's more important? Mm. You can't buy love. You can't buy your relationship with your family. Mm. It's more important than two billion dollars. That's powerful, Mark. Mm -hmm. Marshall, what's the other one? Oh, the other one is the, kind of the opposite. My biggest learning as a coach came from a guy who Alan Mulally, who was one of the greatest leaders who ever lived, he was CEO of the year in the United States. He went to Ford. The stock is at one dollar and one cent. Leaves it's eighteen dollars and forty cents. Amazing, amazing man. He taught me a great lesson. He said, "Marshall, your biggest challenge as a coach is customer selection. You pick the right customer, your process always works. You pick the wrong customer, your process never works. Don't make coaching about yourself and your own ego and how smart you think you are. Make it about those great people you work with and how proud you are of them." Mm -hmm. That was such a wonderful lesson. I've been ranked the number one coach for 10 years in a row. Mm -hmm. I have no idea if I'm the number one coach. I can tell you one thing. Well, we do. You know you're number one. Okay. Well, I get ranked number one. That didn't mean, not, I don't know what that means. But I can tell you one thing. I have the best clients. Mm. There's no other coach that has better clients mm -hmm. than I do. I love my clients. Mm -mm. So I may or may not be the best coach. I definitely have the best clients. And it's all about having the great clients. Wonderful. Beautifully said. We, beyond performance and delivering results, you do talk about achieving happiness yes. or getting self-fulfillment. And, mm. um, and you've mentioned a lot of that in your book. Yes. A lot of, in, a lot of, in your books, you've mentioned about um, what's more important. Life is short. Right. Uh, uh, what, were, what are the key insights that you bring to your coaching sessions and to your clients' lives? Well, you know, in my book, Mojo, I talk about success. Mm. What is success? 
Well, I've done many programs with older people like me, maybe a little younger than me, but it's close. What are they going to do now? They're near the end of their careers. And what matters in life? Well, the first thing that matters is take care of your health. Mm. You don't take care of your health, the rest of it's irrelevant. <laughs> The next thing is wealth. Wealth doesn't matter as much as you think. Once you have a like mid-level to above mid-level income, there's actually no correlation between happiness and money. More money doesn't make you less happy or more happy. There's no mm -hmm. correlation. The important to have a great relationship with people you love. Assuming you're healthy, you've got a middle class income, you have a great relationship with people you love, what matters? Two things, happiness and meaning. Happiness is you love the process of what you're doing. You enjoy doing it. Meaning is the results of what you're doing are important to you. They're meaningful for you. No one can define happiness for you but you. No one can define meaning for you but you. And our research I've done with my daughter Kelly, who's a professor at Vanderbilt University, our research is very clear. The more, the more percent of your life you spend in activities that produce simultaneous happiness and meaning, the more satisfied you are with your life. Mm -hmm. And you need both. If you try to pursue happiness with no meaning, playing bad golf with old men at the country club all day <laughs> yeah. and eating chicken sandwiches <laughs> while discussing gallbladder surgery, but that gets that. old. <laughs> that gets old very fast. And, you know, the ninth cruise, uh, cruise director jokes aren't funny anymore. Mm -hmm. It's empty. You need to have both happiness and meaning. On the other hand, if you try to do something meaningful that doesn't make you happy, you're a victim or a martyr, that's no good either. You need both. Happiness and meaning. Simultaneously. Yeah. So at the end of the day, in every coaching session or every series of coaching session you have with your clients, you nail those two important ingredients in their life. What's important is um, if you don't have that, why bother? They're rich anyway. Very good point. Yeah. No, nobody's starving here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, if you don't have happiness and meaning, why are you doing it? Mm -hmm. If they have a serious problem with that, what, nor what, what course of action do you take just to make them realize that there's something missing, that there's an emptiness? Oh, I, they tell me, I don't tell them. Okay. So I don't impose my judgment much on anybody. You know, last time I checked, no one made me God. So <laughs> I'm not here to judge anybody. I don't try to make anyone do what they don't want to do. Uh, look at the people I coach. I can't make them do what they don't want to do. What am I supposed to do? Shoot them, beat them up, kill them? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I can help them do what they do want to do. So I'm not in the business of making people be who they do not want to be. Mm. I'm in the business of helping great people be who they do want to be. Wow. Now I see why you're the number one coach in the world. I mean, if, if that's how you have suspending judgment, listening to people, probably extending empathy, yeah. where do you get your patience, tolerance, well, and long-suffering. <laughs> I don't know what else the to call key it. is not me. Mm. The first thing I teach my clients is, I don't get paid if you don't get better. Mm -hmm. And I do not get paid because I'm a good coach. I get paid because you are a great client. Don't make this about me. It's not my life, it's your life. Mm -hmm. Don't make it about me. And my great clients have to have three things. Number one is courage. It takes courage to do this takes courage to look in the mirror. Number two, you've already mentioned, humility. You know what I've learned? I cannot help anyone who's already perfect. <laughs> yeah, so if yeah. they're already perfect, why they, I don't need to be here. They don't need you. They don't need me. I can't help, yeah. I don't help mm. perfect people. Yeah. You need to have some humility to admit you can improve. And then the third thing is you have to have the discipline to do the day to day to day hard work required to get better. Courage, humility, and discipline. Yeah. The day-to-day -day thing that you were talking about, is those who are like asking questions to themselves, right? Or yes. Now, that's the daily question process. Mm -hmm. Let me describe that. Okay. Uh, the daily question process is very simple. Everyone listening right now, I'm going to teach them something that takes three minutes a day, costs nothing, and helping get better at almost anything. Mm -hmm. Some people are skeptical. That sounds too good to be true. Half the people quit in two weeks. <laughs> Not because it doesn't work. It does work. It's very hard to do, though. Okay. Get an Excel spreadsheet. On one column, write down a series of questions that represent what's most important in your life. Could be friends, family, health. Write any questions you want. Every question has to be answered with a yes and no or a number. Seven boxes across, one for every day of the week. End of the week, that spreadsheet give you a report card. Mm -hmm. And I try to warn people in advance, the report card at the end of the week might not be quite as beautiful as the corporate values plaque up on a wall. Mm. I've been doing this for years, and when you do this every day, you know what you learn? You learn that life 
is incredibly easy to talk. Mm. And life is incredibly difficult to live. And you do this every day, you don't look at those talk values. You're looking at those live values, they're not so pretty. Mm. I give you just one question for myself every day, and that is, uh, how many times yesterday did you try to prove you were right when it was not worth it? I've almost never scored a zero. Mm. Kind of hard for that old professor not to be right all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, going back to the ego problem. I mean, yeah. How about that, that young interviewing guy? <laughs> you have any trouble trying to be right a little bit too much? Uh, I'm struggling <laughs> every moment of my life. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Just trying to navigate the way, even the way this interview is going right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Um, you shared about powerful questions, right? Proactive questions. Well, let me talk about that because my daughter Kelly taught me that. Mm -hmm. Again, very proud of her. She has a PhD from Yale. Did you ever see the TV show Survivor? Yeah. She was on Survivor Africa, she, the she third was. season. Oh, yeah. yeah. Worked for Mark Burnett. She got a PhD from Yale. Now she's a professor at Vanderbilt University. So yeah. daddy's very proud. Wow. Uh, she taught me something called active questions. Okay. They begin with the phrase, did I do my best to? And now my first six questions every day are, number one, did I do my best to set clear goals? Mm -hmm. Number two, did I do my best to uh, make progress toward achieving my goals? Mm -hmm. Number three, did I do my best to be happy? Mm. Number four, did I do my best to find meaning? Number five, did I do my best to, to build positive relationships with other people? And mm -hmm. finally, number six, did I do my best to be fully engaged? And our research on this is pretty amazing. We've done studies now, 95 studies with about 5,000 people, and about a third of the people that do this just 10 days report they get better at everything. And then over two-thirds get better at four items at least, 91% get better at, uh, at one at least, and mm -hmm. then about 9% no change, and, and almost nobody gets worse. Why? Every day these questions get us to focus not on what I cannot change, it gets to focus on what I can change. Okay. And I had some pretty deep experiences today. I mean, you weren't listening to this, but I talked to one gentleman who was probably one of the highest ranking people there, and I asked him on a one to 10 scale on a typical day, did I do my best to be happy? What score would you get? You know what he said? Two out of 10. Wow. And I told him, raise the score. Mm. We're all gonna be equally dead here. And mm. he thought about it and he said, I've just been so focused on money and achievement mm. i forgot to be happy wow wow and framing the questions is very important right yes. you said uh what can i do better to achieve my goal or yeah. what can i do better to be happy did i do my best did I, did I do my best did i do and that's the one thing we're always responsible for okay. did i do my best you don't have any excuse mm -hmm. if i don't do my best whose fault is that i can't blame you mm. by the way the hardest question you can test yourself on every day has four qualities. Number one, you write the question. Why is it hard? You can't blame the idiot that wrote the question. Number <laughs> two, you. Right. you know the answer. Mm. Why is it hard? You can't say you don't know how to do it. Yeah. Number three, you know it's important. You can't say it's trivial. And number four, all you have to do to make a high score is try. You don't even have to succeed. Did you at least try? Almost every day I fail at least one question that I wrote the question. I know the answer. I know it's important. And I didn't try. Wow. Why is this hard? Nobody to blame. But yourself. It's so much more fun blaming other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's an excuse. It's so much more fun. And I've been doing this 25 years. And you know what you learn when you do this for a long time? Yeah. I, I pretty much know where the source of all, all my problems is. You know where that is? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right here. Yeah. You want to find the source of your problems, look in the mirror. <laughs> That's where you know, that, you know, then the cause of your problems is going to be staring right back at you. Wow. I pay a woman to call me every day just to review the questions with me. Why? I know how hard it is. Somebody said, why do you do this? Don't you know the theory about how to change behavior? I wrote the theory about how to change behavior. I know how hard this is. My name is Marshall Goldsmith. I got ranked number one coach in the world. I have a woman call me on the phone every day just to listen to me read questions I wrote and provide answers I wrote. Why do I do this? My name is Marshall Goldsmith. I'm too cowardly to do this by myself. I'm too undisciplined. I need help. <laughs> and it's okay. Yeah. You know what? We all need help. Yeah. It's okay. Well, I'm Boris Joaquin, and I'm ego-driven, and I'm <laughs> learning from Marshall Goldsmith right now. <laughs> you, you, these are life-saving tips, guys, and, and we don't even have to pay him. It's free. <laughs> I'm about to wrap up now, Marshall, and I don't know how much 
you know about uh, how much engagement you had with Filipino business leaders or yeah. Asians, but you've been in Asia for quite so many times to, yes. to even count. You, yes. you're, you're, a, you're a record breaker in, yes. in traveling. Mm -hmm. So um, what, is your, what is your thoughts about Filipino leaders in general? What do you think I, about I'm us? not an expert on Filipino leaders particularly, but I do know a little bit about Filipino people. Okay, go ahead. And I guess it's kind of good news in the challenge. Mm -hmm. The good news is I find people here very positive and caring. Mm -hmm. People here don't like to give negative feedback at all. Mm. In terms of being critics, about the least critical people in the world, just according to any survey, which is kind of good and kind of not so good. So I think one thing that works very well here is feed forward. Mm. The reason is you learn to ask for input and listen to ideas and you don't have to negatively critique another person. And I find if any country in the world has problems with providing negative critiques to people, your country is probably right at the top of the list. I would argue with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much. Any final words that you want to share to our viewers? Right yes, now? my best advice in the world. Okay. Take a deep breath. Imagine you're 95 years old and you're getting ready to die. Before you die, you're given a beautiful gift, the ability to go back in time, the ability to go back in time and talk to the person that's listening to me right now and help that person have a better life. What advice would that old fellow, that old woman have for you? Whatever you're thinking now, do that. I interviewed old people who are dying and three comments come up, three themes. Number one, be happy now. Not next week, not next year. Be happy now. The great Western disease, I'll be happy when I have the money, the status, the BMW. Be happy now. Be Life happy. is short. Number two, people. Do good things for people, especially your friends and family. When you're 95 years old, you look around your deathbed, no employees are there. You realize these people care. And the other one is go for it. If you have a dream, go for it. Because if you don't go for it when you're 35, you may not when you're 45, you probably won't when you're 85. And it doesn't have to be a big one, maybe a small one. And old people, you know, just do what you think is right. Old people, we almost never regret the risk we take and fail. We always regret the risk we fail to take. Wow, wow. That's mind blowing. Guys, you were just coach, mentored by the great Dr. Marshall Goldsmith. Thank you again for being with us. Thank that you was so an amazing much. conversation that we had. Thank you so much.